guys, welcome back to Star Soaps channel. How are you today? I'm doing good. Today I'm going to be making my love spell soap. That's right, I've had a crush on this fragrance for a long time and thanks to the gorgeous Melissa Stanford from Lucky 7 Soap, I got my hands on some. So come with me and I'll show you how I make my love spell soap. Squee! So I'm just going to start like I always do and add my cold lye water with some mulberry silk dissolved in it to my cold oils with some goat's milk mixed in and everything's at room temperature or around about 25 degrees celsius and I'm going to bring it to a light trace and then split it out for two different colours. I'm going for pink and purple with my love spell and I'm really excited to soap this fragrance because I've totally loved on this fragrance for so long and that might sound really weird because you're thinking well hang on you can't get it how do you even know about it but I've had beautiful products sent to me from people from all around the world and a lot of these products have been scented in love spell and I love fruity lemony zingy citrusy scents they're like one of my favorites so whenever I get sent like a bar of soap with this um, fragrance or a moisturizer with this fragrance and I'll leave um, a link below to the playlist of all the beautiful boxes of goodies and packages of goodies I've received over my time being a soaper and a youtuber and thank you so much to each and every one of you who have sent me something because you just totally make my whole world brighter but every time I smell it is I'm just like oh my gosh that's love spell I know straight away I can always tell straight away and if you watch some of the videos or if you have seen some of the videos in that playlist you'll know what I'm talking about as soon as I pull out a bar of soap I'm like oh love spell because I just know it and love it and Melissa of Lucky 7 Soap knew about this and she knew that I was into it and she sent me a bottle of it and a parcel and I'll leave a link below of course to that video as well. She's such an angel. Thank you Melissa, you rock. And yes, so now I'm finally after all these years getting to have my experience of soaping with it and it is a beautiful fragrance to soap with. It does not thicken the soap. It does not speed up trace it does not cause the soap to separate or chunk up or do anything bad it's totally awesome and I was able to play around for ages trying to get my colors just right which sometimes I can't do sometimes my soap's getting thick and I just have to hurry which means I'll often go ahead with pastel looking colors that I'm not happy with whereas because this particular fragrance love spell um, and it was by candle science this particular one was from candle science um, it just works so, it behaves so well and works so well. I was able to fluff around and get all this colour. I was not happy with the shade of purple here and I ended up using up just about all of my purple berries mica. So I'll have to get some more of that because I do absolutely love that colour. But I ended up getting one of the most vibrant purples I've ever gotten from any soap ever. And I'm so stoked with it. It looks so awesome in the final soap. So yeah, but I want to give you a little tip about mica right now to my fellow cold processed soap makers I love mica it is beautiful it is sparkly it is a really unique colorant but I think personally that oxides and like liquid dyes and pigments are really good in cold processed soap to color a big chunk of soap like what I just did rather than mica and this is because I think mica works better when you mix it in a bit of oil or glycerin and use it on the very top of your soap you can mix it up in the same colors that you used in your soap so like if you had red and blue oxide you can use red and blue mica it adds a sparkly touch and you don't use up as much of your mica as you would trying to color a bulk lot of soap so that is just a little insider trick there from one soaper to you guys and if you make soap you might understand what I mean I absolutely love that dark color as you can see trickling back across the surface there because I know when I swirl it it's gonna look fantastic so I guess um, I want us to achieve that I want that bold color in my soap but I also love my mica and it is expensive and I've been thinking more and more I want to color the bases of my soap with oxides and use mica on the very top. One thing that I should mention just at the end of that waffle to kind of finish it is that mica won't sort of stain or when I say stain I mean it won't color the water so when you lather up with a brightly colored soap that's been colored with mica it often will not lather that color but if you do it with oxides it often will lather that color so that's just something to bear in mind. So now I'm just going across the very top of the soap and I'm going to layer my three colours and swirl them in a mattress swirl. Smile. 
So the final flourish is these little hearts I made from my moldable soap dough and I will leave a link below to me making moldable soap dough so you can check it out and make it yourself. I love them, they're so cute and little and the perfect finishing touch for love spell soap. So it sits overnight and we're back again the next day to cut and I didn't mention but I'm sure you saw I'm making one full sized loaf and one shorter loaf. That's because the full size bars are going in my regular inventory for me to sell on Trade Me and at my markets and the shorter bars are going to my wholesale order. So let's see how these swirls turned out. That's not bad for an end slice, pretty stoked. And I can't wait to see how they turned out on the inside. <laughs> Until I get home 
Those just turned out absolutely fantastic and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> I hope that you can see what I mean along the top of the soaps there regarding the mica versus the soap. So like you can see the next day, like when it's wet, you can hardly tell the mica from the wet soap. Oh, gorgeous, beautiful wet soap. But once it's set, you can quite clearly see how vibrant that swirl, especially the pink part, has stayed on the top versus how pastel it has become in the actual soap so that's what I was trying to get at with my whole oxides versus mica debate earlier on so I hope you enjoyed watching me make these soaps and this week I would like to highlight the wonderful and talented Elizabeth White and her beautiful cold process soap that she shared in our group over on Facebook called Star Soaps Family and we'd love you to come join the family and share your creations with us. I save all the pictures and then I can tack them onto the end of my videos and give you all a shout out because guys honestly you inspire me just as much as I inspire you. So thank you so much for watching this silly soapy video by Silly Crystal Star and if you enjoyed it and you want to see more hit that subscribe button guys become a member of our Star Soaps family and feel that soapy love. Until I